I'd rather have him embarrassed than dead. Shit, Peggy. I really hope she's good at hide and seek. Roasted Peggy. Yes! Yes! This. <laughs> I'm satisfied. That was fantastic. Yeah? Don't leave. I'll talk to you about something. Uh-oh. Are you with us? She knows. You see us. I mean, she knows. Oh. She knows. You don't get to pick and choose. Mm-hmm. This is our time. No such thing as men's work, women's work anymore. We get just as much right to... I thought they would go after the man. They went after the women, the unaccompanied women. What a bunch of pussies. Hey, hope they didn't wake you. Out of my way, tool of the state, for I <laughs> come to comfort and counsel my client. Whatever your status, I shall defend you till your last breath. He's gonna be I sick. mean my last breath. <laughs> Excuse the obvious death penalty snafu. I'm slightly inebriated. To boost my client, from these faceless, yeah. faceless restraints you shackled him on. If you so much as touch a hair on my clients. <gasps> oh shit. Oh shit. The jackboots are upon us. Oh, fuck. Deputy Bluth, I need you to lock the back door. Do it now. Garfield, kill the lights in back. Denise, get on the horn to <clears throat> HQ. Tell them we did every man available yesterday. There's a lynching party outside. Shouldn't call a sheriff first? No, oh, you can try, but somehow I don't think he'll answer. You'll kill Pulls. I have never wanted Lisa Olsen more than at this moment. That is so hot. Just like, turn off the lights. Put him back up. He's on. He's... Oh. Play. Counselor? It's possible I soiled myself. Already called for backup on the radio. After wounded knee? Hell, the governor may send in the National Guard. Fucking Hansi! Sick of this guy. No. <gasps> I know you got designs on him. He's no! Up. He's safe. Guarded by armed men. No. 
Thank God. You got less than five minutes to send my Charlie out. Fuck off. Who's this Charlie now? Carl, I'm serious. I need you to sit over there and stay out of the way. Why don't you take all the light bulbs we got, smash them up by the back doors and windows. That way we can hear them if they try to sneak oh, in. Oh, he's amazing. Oh, that's need your help here. Thought you had backup coming. Closest men are outside Nobles, an hour away. Plus, you're talking about farm boys who've never been face to face with a serious man before. Whereas I stared down Chiang Kai-shek. That. And I need someone who can talk some sense into the father. Who better than his son's lawyer? Don't represent the son, though. You do now, Carl. Fuck. <sighs> Am I released, then? Yeah, let's call it that for simplicity. Truth is, there's a lynch mob outside. I want to string you up. What are you... Come on. Stay close and be ready to run. Tell Luda, sit tight. Can't have him getting killed without me. <laughs> Never hear the end of it at dinner. <laughs> God. This is so tense. Maybe we're going in. Like Ho Chi Minh and the Red Chinese. Arms in the air. Hansie's out there. No. I'm so done with Hansie. He's back in the wrong horse. Do you know what I mean? All they do is shit on him. I'm your son's attorney. I need a lawyer. He's going home tonight. I gotta advise you of something, which is this. You're making it worse. The maximum is 10 years. He's out in five for good behavior. Done. But this, you take him out of here now, and he's running the rest of his life. But there's a way out. Leave now, take your men, and none of this falls on the kid. This is the deal I made. He stays clean. But you gotta go. Now. Maybe we leave Charlie. Let's take the butcher. Hmm? Well, now, that's a problem. See, any movement there and they loop the kid in, make him an accomplice. Kidnapping, conspiracy to commit murder, assaulting a police officer, or worse. Fuck it out, Carl. When's Hansi gonna show up and say they run? Oh shit. After them, isn't he? He's not going to be dubbing. All through that scene, I was like, Peggy, Hans is going to come and it's all going to kick off. Can't do that, Ed. Not right now. You're still in my custody. Yeah, what if they came to the house? I, I mean, they went to the station. What if they came to the house? He's going to be able to track them. So, Hank. Oh, 
Christ, man, you look worse than me. Smell better, maybe. Fuck it. No, don't, don't tire yourself. God damn it, Ed. We know where he's headed. Maybe you drive. I'm. I'm seeing double. Yeah, I thought so. Talking about the camaraderie of men, kid. Get hard to define male bond. Born in the age of the Neanderthal, when men still hunted Mastodon with flint and spears. I'm saying you find that in wartime, that foxhole brotherhood. Then when you come back, well, there's no civilian equivalent, not in peacetime. You sure know a lot of words, Carl. I'm an Esquire, kid. <laughs> a barrister. Defender of the common man. The misaccused. <laughs> <laughs> oh, how Carl Weathers. My God, that was so tense, literally from the very beginning of the episode with that drum rolly music building up. It was fucking amazing. Absolutely amazing. <sighs> this war is insane. So Simone thought she was going to give up her uncles, but actually Mike was like, this is actually the optimum time to move on the Gerhardt ranch because they've taken the army off to Laverne. So now the Gerhards are in the shit on set, just multiple fronts, two major ones being Laverne and home. Ugh, and I, th I'm not sure if Ma Gerhardt knows everything, but she she certainly knows something. I don't think Simone is gonna get the chance to fuck the family over again. Is the point? You know that they were having that conversation, and then Kansas City arrived. I think is gonna put. Mad Gerhardt in a much less forgiving mood. Dodd is being Dodd. I, I gotta say, I'm really frustrated with Hansi in this episode, and people might be like, why? He's Because like, actually, I've, I've actually liked Hansi up until this point. I think he's exceptional, not really, at what he does. But, like, as a person of colour, I'm offended by Hansi that he would, like, be treated so shit by Dodd and almost get like Stockholm Syndrome he's still serving him like a master that pisses me off he should be on Bear's side at least but for him to like hold that gun up to Bear so like Dodd who's legit getting his ass kicked at this point then like tries to be his dad and be like do you want me back <laughs> Bear could take Dodd, period. It's, you know, Dodd's just fronting at this point. And again, you know, Dodd does not... Dodd did not shine this episode because <laughs> he did that. He had one job. He just has to go and pick up Peggy. It's literally Peggy and Hank. Hank is on his own. He's armed, but, like, he's alone. And there are all of these guys with much bigger guns. 
Hansi manages to sneak around the back, I think with the idea of maybe like, um, I, th I thought at the time he was just going to go in and get Peggy and leave. And by the time Hank knew anything about it, she'd have been gone. But no, he basically came out the front and just incapacitated Hank with a sort of gunshot, uh, shotgun smack to the head. So to let everyone else in, frankly, they should never have done it. Hansi should have, should have just taken care of business because apparently none of these people is worth, frankly, being there. I think Hansi could literally have done this on his own. The other guys have not only not helped, they've actively hindered. Because they go around searching for Peggy. Oh, I've just got to touch on that Peggy conversation with Hank. How much better do you understand Peggy now? Well, did you when you watched it? Because I do. I really almost burst into tears in that conversation where she was like, this is Ed's house. He grew up here. He's like, she's surrounded by the past. And so she's literally trying to occupy space in the house to disrupt the routine of the past. If you go back to the epi first episode where she has the... The magazine's on the chair and it's the chair that he normally sits in she's like get another chair i think she just wanted something different she, you know she doesn't want ed she doesn't want to sit in ed's mum's chair while ed sits in ed's dad's chair and they pretend to be ed and ed's parents you know she's absolutely clear that she wants to make the most of the changes that are happening and be free to be more than a wife and a mother and I think it's really easy for, for th those people who've never had to experience that sort of oppression to be all like, but isn't being a wife and a mother the most amazing thing in the world? Well, yeah, being a father and a husband is the most amazing thing in the world. But most men don't just do that. You know, they have their friendships, they have their sports, they have their hobbies, they have their careers. They have a life outside of the home and a life in the home. And they should complement each other. And I really get it that Peggy is struggling against the bands and the bonds of society that are kind of fastening her in place. But unwittingly, she was also creating with those pile of magazines a fantastic maze. If anyone were ever to attempt to kidnap her, she heads straight to the basement. These guys with guns are after her. I'm thinking Peggy is toast, but a little bit of me is hoping that she's a little ninja. And she is a little ninja. So she takes one guy out with a sink. With a sink to the face. She creates a distraction, which means Dodd turns around and shoots one of his own guys in the head. Killed, so he's gone. So that's two down. We're left with Dodd down there at this point. And he gets taken out by Peggy, who just uses his own um, cow prod on him. She gets him really good. That was fantastic. And we actually, I don't think we know where she is right now. She, in the wind, in the house, no idea. I don't think we saw her again after that. At least I can't, I can't remember it off the top of my head. So there was that. So Dodd's mission, not accomplished. Bear's mission, meanwhile, was to get Ed. So Dodd's on Peggy, fucked it. Bear is on getting Charlie out and sorting out the butcher. Again, fucked it. Between, basically, Carl and Lou totally nail this situation. Carl despite being hideously drunk, is able to kind of outmaneuver Bear because ultimately what Bear really cares about is the future of his son. And so he says, look, here's the deal. He's 17, he'll get basically get, you know, reduced charges, not a slap, you know, more than a slap on the wrist, but, you know, his life isn't over. It's just, you know, a, a tough period and then he can move on. But, you know, if if you make him a fugitive tonight, his whole life is fucked. And um, after a very, very tense standoff, 
Barrett backs off, but not before he's already sent Hansi around. So Hansi's already now going around attempting to kill the butcher while the, everyone's distracted at the front door. But Lou, smarter than the average bear, has already got the lights turned off. He's got the blinds closed. Like, he's, he knows what a lockdown is, and he's on it. He's even, like, getting them to crush up um, light bulbs so that they can put them next to windows and doors so that if you come in, you step on it and, you know, make them aware. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. And, I mean, and he's taking Ed out the back. But Hansi hears them, and Hansi's off following them. He didn't get to them before they all, you know, Ed's running off to the house and Hank and Lou are probably going to be in the car after him and Hansi is not going to be far behind them. So I don't know what Hansi's game is now. I don't know if he's going to just back off for a second, regroup with the other guys and figure out a plan or if he's lone wolfing this shit now and he's just going to be like, Peggy dead, you know. I think I would have picked Hansi to kill about every single person in this show except Lee Solverson. Not just because we know he doesn't die, but because I think Lou is about as smart as Hansi. You know, they've had very similar training. They've both been in Vietnam um, and clearly both accomplished soldiers. But it's very interesting. I... I I hope Hansi's loyalty breaks because he doesn't know dog shit. He really doesn't. You know, the wider Gerhards, I could see, but why Dodd? So that's kind of where we're at at the moment. I'm going to have to watch the next episode today now because I can't leave it on that cliffhanger. But that was fantastic. That was so good. So onward. Until the next time. Bye bye. Hello and welcome to Script Tonight Reacts. I'm Script Tonight. Today we're going to be watching season two, episode six of Fargo. Damn it, I didn't look at the name. Get a sneeze. And he's saying to Betsy, like, I think you've got the, oh God, I've got really bad allergies today. I have no idea why. It's not even summer. So I've taken antihistamine. Hopefully it'll kick in shortly. But for the time being, it's actually making doing this introduction quite tough. because I keep having to stop and then sniff. And then I look at the camera and realise, oh no, my nose is bright pink. And you guys are going to be there good. Why are our eyes watering and our nose pink? Isn't that upsetting? So I'm not upset. This is bloody dust and heavy rages. Alright, let's try it again.